Friends, wherever you are, whomever you're with, I welcome you to worship together at First Presbyterian Church of Asheville. My name is Patrick Johnson, one of the pastors here, and I'm glad that you've joined us. As we begin worship, I invite you to participate as you would if you were here in person. Respond, pray, listen for the word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. My name is Megan Fendice, and I too am one of the pastors here at First Presbyterian Church Asheville. Please join me now. Are you thirsty for grace? Are you hungry for mercy? 
God is calling, come, find green pastures, rest beside the still waters. Join me now in our prayer of confession. God of mercy, you sent Jesus Christ to seek and save the lost. We confess that we have strayed from you and turned aside from your way. We are misled by pride, for we see ourselves pure when we are stained and great when we are small. We have failed in love, neglected justice, and ignored your truth. Continuing in one voice, have mercy, O God, and forgive our sin. Return us to paths of righteousness through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Jesus Christ came to shepherd God's, shepherd God's people. He is everything we need. Sisters and brothers, declare with me the promise of our faith. Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, we are forgiven. Hi friends, I'm Julie Hester, Interim Director of Christian Education. I want to invite any children that are worshiping with us this morning to come close and I've got a story for you. It's a reading of Psalm 23. It's a book called Found. It's by Sally Lloyd-Jones from the Jesus Storybook Bible. God is my shepherd and I am his little lamb. He feeds me he guides me. He looks after me. I have everything I need. Inside, my heart is very quiet, as quiet as lying still in soft green grass in a meadow by a little stream. Even when I walk through the dark, scary, lonely places, I won't be afraid because my shepherd knows where I am. He is here with me. He keeps me safe. He rescues me. He makes me strong and brave. He is getting wonderful things ready for me, especially for me, everything I ever dreamed of. He fills my heart so full of happiness I can't hold it all inside. Wherever I go, I know God's never stopping, never giving up, unbreaking, always and forever love will go to. One thing I love about this psalm, the dark and scary things don't go away, but the Good Shepherd is right there with us. That's good news. Let's have a prayer. Will you pray after me? Dear God, thank you for your love. 
Thank you for always knowing what we need. Thank you for being our good shepherd. Help us follow you. Amen. I invite you now to pass the peace of Christ. The peace of Christ be with you and also with you. If you are home alone, I invite you to extend a word of peace to someone that God has placed on your heart. Again, I thank you for joining us for worship at First Presbyterian Church Asheville and welcome you to this virtual community of faith. In the bulletin that's available on our website, you'll find several announcements. And mostly I want to invite you to participate in the life of this congregation virtually in the coming weeks. You'll find on our website at the Scattered Church, there are ways to be in Bible study together and centering prayer each week. There are also resources for children and youth and their families. You can find those there. There's also information about our mission partners and ways that we can continue to serve and to give and to support our partners in mission in Asheville. I also want to encourage you to continue living generously in these days. Be generous with your prayers, generous with your thoughts, be generous with your financial resources. The ministry and mission of First Presbyterian continues, and so I encourage you to continue giving. You can find ways to give online at our website, or you can mail uh, a check into the church. I also encourage you to consider giving over and above to our Outreach Relief Fund. That fund goes to support families who are in crisis in this time, uh, both members of this congregation and members of our community. As always, if your pastors or staff can help you in any way, please let us know. We stand ready to support you by prayer or any other way that we are able. Please be in touch with us and let us know how you're doing. And if there's something that would be meaningful in your life that the church can do, please let us know. Please join me now in our prayer for illumination, saying together with one voice, Gracious God, you are our way through the dark valley. Guide us by your word and comfort us with your spirit so that we will live all our days, trusting in your goodness and mercy. Amen. And now a reading from Psalm 23. The, the Lord, Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still water. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies. He anoints my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his namesake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. Holy wisdom, holy word. Thanks be to God. Even though the last two weeks have felt like two months, it's still Lent. It was just a month ago that we began Lent, as we always do, on Ash Wednesday, by remembering our mortality with a sign of ashes. Looking back now, it seems quaint that we had to remember our mortality with ashes. 
Instead of giving up coffee and chocolate for Lent, it turns out we have given up physical closeness. We've given up gathering and holding hands. We've given up hugging and standing close. We've given up working in offices and staying in hotels. We've given up traveling in airplanes. We've given up going out into the world without fear. We've given up looking into the future with confidence. We're staying home so we can love our neighbors as ourselves. The truth is we'll be staying home a lot longer than Lent. I think the most honest thing to say is we don't know how long we'll be staying home. And we don't know what life will look like when this season is over. The text for today was chosen weeks ago, but it could hardly be better for this uncertain time. It's the 23rd Psalm. The basic image of Psalm 23 comes in the very first verse. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The Old Testament is chock full of shepherd and sheep imagery. They're used as metaphors for God and God's people. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In Hebrew, Adonai Rohi, God is my sovereign, I lack for nothing. This is the basic statement of faith for a people who were brought out of slavery by the power of God. Psalm 23 is a song of faith in God's loving power and care. There's realism in Psalm 23, but there's no anxiety. There's honesty about threats and fear and isolation, but there's no worry. The Lord is my shepherd is a taproot that runs deep into ground underneath all other reality. God is my sovereign. I will lack for nothing. When the psalmist is being honest about the threats in the world, she uses the image of the darkest valley or the valley of deep darkness. This valley is any valley where there seems to be no light, hardship, chaos, pain, suffering, the threat of being attacked by something you cannot see is a dark valley, the chance that you will be isolated and alone with no one to help you is a dark valley. What does the valley of deep darkness feel like today? A husband went to see his wife at a care facility in the town they lived in, in Maryland. Now, after 50 years of marriage, he can't go to see her or hold her hand or whisper into her ear. This is the valley of deep darkness. When a janitor at an airport in Houston finished her shift, her boss told her not to come in tomorrow. She was laid off with no word of when she might return. She was supporting two children on $500 a week. This is the valley of deep darkness. A family gathered for the graveside service of a mom who died. Two staff were there from the funeral home and two from the cemetery. That left only six people from the family. The six were gathered six feet apart The others stayed home and said silent prayers. This is the valley of deep darkness. A family that has been dysfunctional for years is now quarantined at home together with no school, no work, no way out. Abuse has always been a shadow at the door in this home and now it has leapt out into the open. Substance abuse, emotional abuse, physical abuse. This is a valley of deep darkness. The Brooklyn Hospital Center in New York has been keeping a running list of potential patients with the novel coronavirus. Their list has grown to more than 800. Most of them screened in a tent in the parking lot before being transferred to the ER. In the ER, the gurneys are lined up like cars in the parking lot. This is a valley of deep darkness. So 
Psalm 23 names the valley of deep darkness for us. It names it for us today, but there is no anxiety in this psalm. This psalm is marked even in the valley of deep darkness by an unshakable trust in the loving, providing, and guarding power of God. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Even though I walk through the valley of deep darkness, the psalmist continues, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. A shepherd would use a staff to guide the sheep, to push them onto the right path, or to push them forward onto a new path. A shepherd would use a staff to ward off enemies, to to beat back any threat that might harm the sheep or steal them away. Even though I walk through the dark valley, you are with me. We are not as isolated as we feel because God is with us. We are not as weak as we feel because God's power is for us. We are not as vulnerable as we feel because God will hold on to us. We are not as lost as we feel because God will guide us. God is our sovereign. The Lord is our shepherd. We lack for nothing. This declaration of faith is a taproot into a ground of reality that is deeper and richer than any other reality. I will fear no evil, for you are with me. What does it mean for God to be with us in this dark valley? There are signs of God's presence around us. But when we look for the presence of the sovereign God today, we must look at the hands and the feet of those who are providing love and care and protection We must look for the hands and the feet of those who are providing nurture for the weak and those who are speaking words of truth. They are the rod and the staff of the shepherd today. A nurse at the care facility in Maryland got the cell phone number of her patient's husband. She called and asked if there was any way he would be able to FaceTime. He said that he had learned that technology from his grandchildren. And so she called back, and this time with video, she held the phone up so that he and his wife could see each other again and smile into each other's faces and eyes. When the janitor at the airport in Houston told her family that she had lost her job, she found her porch was soon filling up with groceries, boxes of cereal, loaves of bread, juice and milk, and on top of the pile, a big pack of toilet paper. At the graveside, where the family gathered six feet apart, they were surrounded by flowers sent to them from all over the country. One of the staff of the funeral home held up a phone where a Zoom call gathered a hundred friends and family in a great cloud of witnesses. Surely thou art with me. In the abusive home, the mother had the courage to call a friend and ask for help. She and her children were moved to a shelter where they could be safe from anyone and anything that would harm them. I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. The psalmist is honest about the dark valley, but the psalmist is not afraid because she has staked her life on the goodness and the mercy of the Lord. She has rested her hopes on that small word, surely. In a world where nothing feels sure, surely, Surely the goodness and mercy of the Lord will follow me all the days of my life. At the Brooklyn Hospital Center, they are facing so many challenges, from shortages of beds to overwhelming numbers of patients to changing protocols every day. 
the head of the ER, Dr. D'Souza, said, I have so many fears about running out of space, about caring for the desperately ill, about choosing who gets care. But she started a new tradition with her team. In the morning, they gather in the tent, six feet apart, and they lift their arms as if holding hands to say a prayer for wisdom for the day and for protection from the disease from their patient, for their patients and for themselves. Dr. D'Souza said, that's all we can do. Just pray, stick together, encourage each other, and not be paralyzed by fear. Thou art with me, O Lord. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. The journey of Lent we began a month ago at one level is about getting in touch with our mortality. We're doing that. But at a deeper level, this journey of Lent is about getting in touch with our mortality with faith. This journey of Lent, however long it will last, is about being able to claim for ourselves the words of the psalmist, the Lord is my shepherd, I will lack nothing when we can plant our lives in that deep soil of faith, we find there is far more there than the absence of anxiety. We find there is the presence of grace. There is strength to help others, many of whom are in a valley darker than ours. There is tenderness to show mercy to those who stand in the greatest need. There is courage to face challenges Challenges we never imagined even two weeks ago. There's willingness to answer new callings, to be led onto new paths and right paths that lead out of the valley. There's hope that the God who raised Jesus from the dead will make a way. And above all, there is love. The love of the Good Shepherd that casts out fear no matter how dark the valley may be. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Sisters and brothers, let us stand and affirm what it is the church believes in our affirmation of faith. In life and in death, we belong to God through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit. We trust in the one triune God, the Holy One of Israel, whom alone we worship and serve. In everlasting love, the God of Abraham and Sarah chose a covenant people to bless all families of the earth. Hearing their cry, God delivered the children of Israel from the house of bondage. Loving us still, God makes us heirs with Christ of the covenant. Like a mother who will not forsake her nursing child, like a father who runs to welcome the prodigal home, God is faithful still. With believers in every time and place, we rejoice that nothing in life or in death can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. You may be seated. At this time, let us come before God in prayer. Loving God, in this fear-filled and challenging time, we feel like sheep, wandering aimlessly. Our lives have been thrown into confusion and chaos. What we know has been uprooted, and we long for consistency and order. As we walk through our darkest valleys, help us to remember that you are our shepherd. And we have everything we need in you. As spring settles in and temperatures exude perfection, your, radiate, your radiance emanates from nature. From the brilliance and the rainbows of color and the flowering plants to the refreshing and rejuvenating showers that bring forth new life, you are present with us. Give us opportunities to breathe in fresh air, to bask in your glory, for you consistently guide us to green pastures. Open our eyes to see your presence before us and around us. We pray, Holy One, for your church. From Asheville to Los Angeles, your church has not been able to gather together. We have been separated as your body, while we are thankful for technology which helps us to bridge the gap of distance, 
Help us to remember that our faith is bigger than us individually. It's bigger than nation states. Our collective faith can move mountains. Our collective faith can change the world. Help us as FPCA, as well as the Church Universal, to focus outward, to figure out how best to care for our neighbors in a time such as this. We pray for leaders and decision makers, from families to presidents. Guide us all with mercy and wisdom. For those who are on the front lines, who are healing the sick, delivering food to those in need, taking tests, bagging groceries, filling prescriptions, taking out the trash. There are so many who are faithfully working to help flatten the curve of infection. God, flatten the curve of infection. Keep your people healthy and safe. Be with our local ministry partners, like Beloved, 12 Baskets, ABCCM, Haywood Street, A-Hope. Be with those who continue to give to others. Be with these ministries, O oh God. We pray for those who have lost trips, for those who have lost major milestones such as graduations and proms, for those who have lost their jobs, for those who have lost their health, for those who have lost their life, and for the loved ones of those who are grieving. For those who have felt the challenges and the pains of this virus. Be with us in our grieving. Be with us in our fear. Be with our neighbors. As we wrestle with how to move forward with any bit of certainty, provide us with your comfort. Your rod and your staff bring solace to a disheartened and saddened people. We trust in you, Triune One, for you conquered death. You gave your life out of love for us. Give us hope and courage in these times. Give us faith to see beyond what we see and hear right now. As our hearts break and bleed, we can trust that healing and renewal is part of your skill set. There is nothing we can do, there is nothing that can happen that can take away the love you have for us. Your goodness and love chase after us all the days of our lives. God of comfort, God of abundance, God almighty, we know that you are with us. And so we pray these things in the name of the Holy One. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. God continues to invite us to live generous lives, trusting in the sure provisions of God. I invite you to live generously with your lives with the words of this invitation. Please join me. Rejoice in the Lord always. Do not be anxious about anything but in everything present your requests to God. With joy and hope, we offer our hearts, our prayers, and our gifts to God. The Lord is my 
please join me in our prayer of thanksgiving. God of compassion and generous love, we give you thanks for the riches of earth, which sustain our lives and which you have created for our joy. We thank you for Jesus, whose life, death, resurrection, and ascension renews our strength and revives our hope. We give you thanks for the Holy Spirit who comes among us, invites us to be with you and each other in creative ways. Strengthen our faith. Bless these gifts for the sake of those in need and for the work of your church. In peace, we pray our thanksgiving. Amen. My friends, be strong, be of good courage. Love your neighbors, love yourselves. For most of us, that means stay home. For those of you who have to go out, know that you have our gratitude, and we will be praying for you. We ask that you take care of yourselves as well as taking care of others. 
May the love of God, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit guard, keep, and uphold you now and forever. Amen. Go now in peace to serve the Lord. The peace of Christ be with you.